All right, I wanted to make a video um, to talk about uh, um, a couple of different tests that we might perform on an engine. Um, the, the first of those is a cylinder leak down test. And then I want to talk a little bit about uh, vacuum and uh, how an internal in, uh, combustion engine um, uh, creates vacuum, what kind of measurements and stuff that we're going to make. OK, so. Um, uh, this uh, engine, uh, this is a, a 3D model. I just got this off of GrabCAD. Um, I'll put a link in the description to it, but this was Jose Mangalhes. I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, but uh, thanks, Jose. Um, so uh, I have right now this cut in a cross-sectional um, uh, pattern. So now you can just see a split uh, down the engine. So here we have the combustion chambers and this is really what we care about when we're talking about um, this type of uh, operation. Now there's a few things that aren't quite right here but uh, don't get caught up on that. Let's just think about the um, uh, the test that we're going to perform. So a cylinder leak down test, uh, the purpose of it is to fill up the combustion chamber with compressed air. <clears throat> when I fill the combustion chamber up with compressed air, I can see whether or not that it's appropriately um, uh, sealed uh, during the um, uh, pressure stroke. So at the top of the, the pressure stroke, we want to make sure that the combustion chamber is sealed. So two things you can see. Let's just look at these two. Let's ignore these um, middle two. So right here we can see one of the valves is opened. Um, and uh, we'd have to look at uh, further detail to figure out which one is which because these appear to be both the same size. But uh, uh, let's let's call this left one the exhaust valve and the right one the intake valve. So uh, in in this particular uh, position, the stroke, I've got the piston has gone to the to top dead center and it's pushing out so the the air is flowing in this direction and then up through the valve and then um, uh, coming out of the exhaust okay so this is pushing out of the exhaust uh, during the intake stroke uh, this valve would be open so it might be you know an example might be this one this intake valve is open and we're drawing air in so the only times those those valves should be open is the exhaust and uh, during the intake okay so on this side what's happened is i've pulled in all my air i've pulled in the air and now i have uh, this part of the combustion chamber right here i'm pressurizing that and uh, so during the um, combustion process this is um, where my air fuel mixture has been compressed and now I can um, ignite it with a spark plug. So the spark plugs in here and it ignites the mixture. So the test, when we're performing this test, we're performing it with a um, compressed air. So we're replacing that air fuel mixture um, that would be in this section right here. So we're replacing it um, with air instead. And so it's a way that we can test that. And we're actually coming through the spark plug. So we connect through the, oh, and I apologize, that looks like it's a little bit open. Um, just depends on what where the position is. But at top dead center, one of these would be all the way closed. So just ignore that tiny little gap. So um, we're putting air in this cylinder. And because this is the compression stroke, this should be completely sealed, right? We would want that to be able to create um, as much pressure as possible, um, compressing that air fuel mixture so we can utilize it. All right, so when we put that air in this, um, in this position, we would want uh, the cylinder at top dead center, so here at the top. Um, so the cylinder is at its farthest upward travel and we would want these two valves closed. So you can see that this cylinder is, um, we are at top dead center, but the exhaust valve is open because of the camshaft. The camshaft is open, this exhaust valve. So uh, we would not want to test in this in this circumstance. We Just because it's at top dead center, it's not at the right top dead center. This is the end of the exhaust stroke. And here we have the end of the compression stroke. All right, so we fill this chamber up with air, and it's a metered amount of air, meaning it's an amount of air that we're measuring to determine is the air leaking, a leak down test. So when I fill this up with air, um, there's several possibilities if this cylinder, if this specific cylinder has some type of a fault. 
So the first of those, and I think we were calling this left side the exhaust, if this was if this was open slightly and air was that we pressurized, that pressurized air was moving its way in this direction, uh, we would hear air leaking out of the exhaust manifold. That, that air would be escaping. It's not supposed to go through here, right? We don't want that air to go through there. So the valve should be sealing the the uh, cylinder head that should be sealed and then we have a valve guide that's the uh, device that's on the interior of right here there's a replaceable valve guides and I'll link to another video where I discuss uh, measuring valve guide clearance but uh, that's the um, place where the valve guide is so if air is leaking out of here and going into um, the exhaust uh, valve then you should hear air coming out of the exhaust manifold or uh, you know the muffler if you can get all the way back there and you've got uh, enough airflow all right so that would mean that I have a bad exhaust valve all right so then the next the next possibility is that um, just as this is shown you know here I have a, a bent valve or a burnt valve or a chip in the valve some some reason the valve guide is bad um, that air so I fill this up with air is now leaking into the intake manifold into the intake manifold and so I might pop off the air filter um, or if I can get to where the throttle body is I, I would should be able to hear that air leaking through and when we're performing that cylinder leak down test the the tester itself will say hey there's air leaking and then you know I've got to look at the different locations so exhaust valve uh, I'm going to look in the, the exhaust manifold or the, the down at the muffler um, or tailpipe and uh, the intake manifold. I'm going to look at that, uh, um, the throttle body, um, possibly the air filter uh, and so on. So that would mean that then that air is leaking out. So I fill it up with air. It's not leaking out of the exhaust. It's not leaking out of the intake, but it's leaking out of the um, the crank case. So I've got a let me just turn it on real quick uh, valve cover installed right here so let me close that all right so here's a, a, a little bit different uh, image right here at the top this is the the valve cover uh, so this is covering up the valves and uh, right here is the um, the opening to be able to fill the the uh, crankcase with oil when I when I pour oil into this engine I pour it in here and there are um, passages uh, for the oil to be able to fill fill this part up and then it'll start you know making its way down into the oil pan so here down at the bottom this is uh, the oil pan so this is getting filled up with oil and I'm filling it up uh, right here by the top so it makes its way down all right so if I fill up the um, uh, combustion chamber with air pressure um, the air that uh, if the air leaks past so the, here's the piston right here uh, the piston has rings and those rings are meant to seal that part of the combustion chamber so if I have the air leak past those rings it'll come all the way down here to the bottom and down into the crank case right that's the crank shaft so this is the crank case it'll come into the crank case and if you recall the oil that I just spoke about comes down through the oil fill um, port in the um, valve cover so so if I have air leaking down in this area there's a passage for the air to be able to come out so if I take just this cap off the oil cap off and I hear air coming out of here that's going to be a um, an indication that the air is getting past the piston rings Okay, so we covered the exhaust valve, it would come out of the um, uh, tailpipe, and uh, the intake valve, it would come out of the throttle body or air filter. Um, if it comes out of the oil cap, then it's leaking past the pistons. I have blow-by, it's leaking past those piston rings down into the crankcase. Okay, um, the next thing that, that could happen, and it doesn't necessarily show it, uh, very well on this particular engine so we're gonna have to do a little bit of imagination on that but um, if uh, e each of these um, uh, inside of the block itself so this is the engine block that's housing the 
um, uh, pistons and connecting rods and so forth. Um, we have a uh, coolant passages. So there's places where coolant is going and, and it's not rendered very well in here. So let's just say this is a coolant passage. So this is a hole that allows coolant to cool the cylinder itself, right? And it's flowing through both the cylinder head and through the, the block. And it's rotated around. There's a water pump um, that's uh, circulating that coolant through the system. So sandwiched in between here, and you can kind of see it right here in this, this purple image, sandwiched in between here is the head gasket. So the cylinder head up here at the top um, is sealed to the cylinder block, this part at the bottom, uh, by way of this gasket. So if this gasket were to fail, if I had failure in this gasket, what could happen is, in you can see it right here, so remember I'm filling this up. I'm filling this area up with air. If this gasket right here were to fail, that air could be released through here, through the gasket, and into the cooling system. So I'd suddenly be introducing air into the coolant. Okay, so um, I might be able to see uh, results of that in the coolant reservoir. Uh, if I were to pull the cap off, I could see maybe air bubbles coming through there. That would be an indication of a bad head gasket. The other thing that's a possibility might be easier to see on this one is let's say I'm filling this one up and this would have to be up at top dead center but I filled this up with air it's on the compression stroke both my valves are closed it's possible that I could be leaking through through the head gasket into the adjacent cylinder now the adjacent cylinder might have the exhaust manifold open it might have the intake manifold open uh, not manifold, exhaust valve, intake valve. So it, it's possible that the air is leaking and coming into the other uh, cylinder and then leaking through what is supposed to be open. That exhaust valve is supposed to be open. So we want to be very careful when we're determining that where the air is leaking to ensure that it's not leaking through the head gasket into the other cylinder and out a normally open um, uh, or a... a <clears throat> A condition where that is supposed to be open so th so that air flowing through there would be uh, an indication of a bad head gasket so the four things that uh, um, we said we could have a um, in exhaust leak we could have a um, intake leak um, and that would be a bad intake valve a bad exhaust valve we could have bad piston rings that would come down into the oil uh, crank case and out the oil cap we could have a bad head gasket, which would come into the coolant. I think I said four, but there's five. So here we have the um, it coming into the coolant with a bad head gasket or leaking into an adjacent cylinder. So leaking from here into an adjacent cylinder. So hopefully that clears things up on uh, the cylinder balance um, test. I've got another video I'll link that shows the actual test being performed, but it's a lot easier to kind of visualize in this uh, this animation. All right, uh, the other thing I wanted to show you, maybe this will help, help with the vacuum um, uh, test, is uh, this is a website, I'll link it, it's called Animated Engines. They've got some really great stuff. Um, but this allows us to see kind of the operation. So ignore this part of it. Uh, most uh, vehicle engines aren't gonna run on this type of system. Really what we care about is right here, right? We still have our, our valves um, intake and exhaust. And um, we can see that um, right there, so this is uh, the top of the intake stroke. So I'm starting to draw in the air fuel mixture. The intake valve has opened and I'm drawing that in. All right, so the adjacent cylinders. So these adjacent cylinders, right? One of them would be on the, the power stroke, right? So let's, so let's say this one is on the power stroke. It is pushing down. That downward force is rotating the crankshaft and then drawing one of these into the intake stroke. Okay, so, so that, that um, um, the suction that's created from drawing this piston down, that's what's creating the vacuum in our engine. And so we're making a measurement of the engine's overall suction as it sucks in the air fuel mixture 
right? So that air fuel mixture comes in as I draw down from the top of the intake stroke to the bottom. All right, so when I'm measuring vacuum, I'm really measuring the, the suction of all the cylinders, right? I couldn't really measure one at a time um, because they're rotating, it's rotating so quickly. So I'm looking at an overall efficiency of how well the engine is sucking or pulling in the um, air fuel mixture. So vacuum, once again, is, is a negative pressure. So that negative pressure is um, created from drawing in um, the air fuel mixture uh, from the um, intake manifold. And so when we're making measurements, uh, when we're making vacuum measurements, we're looking at whether or not this, this chamber is sealed well, right? If this was not sealed very well, the, the exhaust valve had failed, I could have problems with drawing in. I'm not drawing in the appropriate amount of air fuel mixture. And so I could see problems um, or, or I could see changes in the um, vacuum gauge that reflect that and you know the, the books have a lot of it and, and a lot of older technicians you know they they swear by the vacuum gauge because uh you can see fluttering and 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 valves that have failed and stuff but uh it, it's my opinion and you know this is the the internet so it could be challenging um to get this information and everyone believe it right but uh the um uh, the vacuum gauge really only tells me the overall condition of the engine, right? Overall, how is the engine performing? I, I can't narrow it down, so I might be able to tell, hey, yes, I have a bad valve, but I don't know is which cylinder is the bad valve, right? Because that vacuum test is only drawing in enough air or drawing in air um, and, and measuring it overall for the entire engine rather than per cylinder. So the cylinder leak down test has an advantage in that now I can check and see which cylinder has the problem, right? I fill this cylinder up with air and determine is it okay. Then I fill this cylinder up with air and determine if it's okay. And I fill this up with air. So um, I, I would recommend the cylinder uh, leak down test as a you know kind of a good way to be able to determine um, the state of each of the cylinders. Now there's many cases where you would want to just say hey overall how's this engine doing um, and uh, you know a vacuum test could work very well with that. Um, I think a compression test probably would be a better place to start so do a compression test then do a cylinder leak down test. Uh, the thing with vacuum tests on older engines it was okay on newer engines the uh, um, the ECM does so much to try to compensate um, for, uh, you know, wear and, and uh, um, problems with the engine that a lot of times a vacuum test, it's hard to get it to uh, reflect really that there's a problem. Whereas a compression test, you're, you're pushing, you know, uh, or you're measuring compression of an individual cylinder. So <clears throat> if, I, if I suspected a problem with the engine, I would do a compression test. Let's say that it determined, the compression test determined that I was low on this part of the um, engine, this last cylinder. Then I do a cylinder leak down test, and that leak down test would then tell me, hey, it's a valve, or it's the piston rings, or so on. Either way, you're gonna have to take things apart, but uh, this at least leads you to the um, conclusion of what, what is wrong with that. So hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if uh, you want some further information um, and maybe we can get a better detail. I can actually make this animated and uh, we'll go from there. All right, hopefully that helps.